Hey everyone, today I'm going to look through a game between Joshua Waitzkin and Avi Friedman played in New York 1993. Now Waitzkin is a former US child prodigy and he has the film Searching for Bobby Fischer based on his early life. Many thought he could have been the future world champion but in fact he gave up chess to um, pursue other hobbies such as martial arts. So many people think of this as a great loss but there are many things that you want to do out there in the world so fair play to the guy. But in this game Joshua was white, Friedman was black and he began with 1e4 and Friedman played e6, Waitzkin played d4 and we get into a French exchange variation and he plays c4 here from white, knight to f6 to defend the d5 pawn and knight to c3 to put more pressure on that d5 pawn. Friedman now played bishop to e7 developing his bishop and bishop to d3 from Waitzkin and castles knight ge2 from white and here black now takes on c4 and what this does is make white move the bishop twice in the opening. So white's already wasted one move moving the bishop to d3 and now white has to capture his pawn on c4 with the same bishop so actually wastes a bit of a tempo. Knight bd7 now from black and white skin castle here and knight b6 from black to attack the bishop on c4. The bishop is retreated and c6 is played by black to gain a foothold in the centre and look at all these pieces now grouping up on this d5 square. Waitzkin played rook to e1, developing another piece and using the open e-file. Bishop to f5 from black and knight g3 now from white to attack the bishop. And the bishop is forced back to g6. And here Waitzkin played a very interesting move. He now played f4. And it's not the most sensible move, but it threatens to play f5. So in the game, black played h6 here to move the bishop back to h7. But bishop d6 was also an option, and if uh, white now plays f5, black can take on g3, and if h takes g3, just bishop takes f5, and the g pawns have been doubled, and black's actually won a pawn. If f takes g6, then just bishop takes e1, and black's won the exchange, and an extra pawn, so black will be doing very well here. In fact though, after bishop d6, white can now play rook f1, and h6 is now forced and we'll probably follow f5, bishop h7 and bishop f4 and captures, captures a5, knight h5 maybe and after captures and captures after a4, bishop c2 and f6 this is actually an even position I think black is doing slightly worse use of the bishop on h7 and this open g file but black should be able to recover because that d4 pawn is also incredibly weak in the center so this is quite an even balanced position in the game Friedman now just plays h6 simple enough and after f5 from Waitzkin bishop h7 white now plays bishop to e3 bishop f4 here may have been an option because after bishop d6 white can now calmly just play bishop to e5 and if black captures that bishop White's got two dominating uh, pawns in the center of the board. So White will be doing incredibly well here. Instead though, Bishop E frees natural enough because it protects the D4 pawn. And now Knight BD5 is played by Black. Waitzkin retreats the Bishop to F2. Knight takes D5 is an option. After Knight takes D5, and if uh, White captures the Bishop, Queen takes. Queen G4 could be played. Threatening Bishop takes H6 here because the pawn on G... 7 is pinned and here black can go wrong with if king h8 bishop takes h6 is a move because the rook's going to capture the bishop on e7 so black does have to be quite careful bishop f6 is actually the most natural move and if white captures on h6 queen takes d4 queen takes bishop takes bishop e3 and bishop e5 again this is quite an even position for black black's got two bishops the bishop on h7 is a bit uh, cut off but the knight on g3 is now attacked, so white might have some defending to do to protect this f5 pawn. So maybe knight takes d5 isn't the best. Bishop f2, simply going back, is probably better. Queen d7 was played by Friedman to attack this f5 pawn twice. And queen f3 defends it. Black now plays bishop d6, attacking one of the defenders. Uh, but Waitzkin now uses the, his other bishop to protect the pawn on f5. If bishop takes g3 here, the bishop can recapture and if knight b4 trying to attack the bishop on c2 bishop b1 can be played but black can now pick up an extra pawn with queen takes d4 if bishop f2 queen d7 
knight to e4. Both compute the computers give both sides as very even here now, even though black's actually a pawn up. After knight bd5, g4 is suggested to support this f5 pawn. And after queen c7, captures and captures, and h3. Again, this is given as even for both sides. Black's actually a pawn up, but the bishop on h7 is really cut off. And maybe this is where the computer shows both sides as even. But black didn't take on g3 here. Friedman instead played knight to e7. So he's using another piece to attack his f5 square. And now Josh Wachin played an incredibly bold move. He played rook to e5 here, protecting the f5 square, and also enticing black to take on e5 with the bishop. So let's look at that. So what happens if bishop takes e5 here? Well, d takes e5 can be played, and the knight's forced to d5. f6 looks really tempting, but it doesn't actually work because bishop takes c2 can be played. And after f takes e7, just knight takes e7, uh, white's just um, the exchange down. Instead, after knight fd5, white should be patient and just play bishop to e4. And now f6 is being threatened because the bishop on e4 is protected. And if black plays f6 to stop it, just e6 here. After queen c7, white's got many options for the attack now with like knight h5. After knight takes c3, b takes. Queen a5, queen g4 maybe to protect. White's now threatening mate on g7. And if the bishop g6 is the only move to protect it, white's got to be a bit careful. If f takes g6 here, f5 can be played by black. And after queen to e2, f takes e4, black's actually doing a bit better now. So knight g3 is probably forced. The bishop go back to e8 and queen f3. And this is actually a very interesting game now. So white's the exchange down, but has an incredible attack coming up. So it'll be very, very interesting to see what happens. But here after queen a5, I think white can do better with queen g3, so it stops any f5 ideas. So bishop g6 again to block the queen. And now white can play knight takes g7. After king captures, rook b1 to attack b7, b6 to stop it. After f takes g6, queen e5, white plays queen f3 to stop the trade of queens. And after queen takes e6, something like rook e1. We're getting to a very unbalanced position now. If the queen d6, h4, rook a8, h5, it's a very interesting position. So white's got the two bishops. The g6 pawn and h5 pawn are very far up the board, so black's got to be very careful. The computer actually gives this as white as slightly better, and I tend to agree. It'd be very easy for white to play, and black's got to be very careful. So here I think black was wise not to take on e5, because white just gets a brilliant attack after d takes e5 and bishop to e4. Instead Friedman now played rook f e8 and Weichkin now played rook a e1 doubling the rooks and here black now decides to take the rook so bishop takes and now d takes and as we see knight f d5 and here I think Weichkin actually missed a win. e6 was such a strong move in this position. If f takes e6 then f takes e6 Queen c7, and now white can play queen f7 check. After king h8, bishop d4 can come in, and white's threatening mate on g7. Knight to f5 to defend g7 and attack the queen, and after the queen's trade, bishop takes f5, bishop takes f5, knight takes f5, and white's actually got two pieces for the rook. After knight takes e6, knight d6, rook e7, just bishop retreats, the smoke's cleared, and white is actually coming out on top here. So maybe e6 should have been played. If queen d6 instead of taking on e6, then white can now just play e takes f7. After the king captures, just play bishop to b3 to pin that knight. And after king g8 to retreat the, uh, the king back into the corner, knight c e4 to attack the queen. After queen e5, f6. Again here black struggling to defend this position. After rook f8, queen d1. G takes f6 and just bishop d4 and black's got to retreat the queen back and queen f6 the rook's attacking the queen and there's so many pieces in the attack for white it's pretty much game over in this type of position so here white can definitely should have played e6 he said though he played knight c e4 maybe preparing knight c5 and black here plays knight to b4 so in this position why can't just Black just take on f5. Well, after knight takes f5, knight takes f5, bishop takes f5, 
You might think you've won a pawn, but then just comes knight c5, attacking the queen, and two pieces attacking the bishop at the same time. True black can now play bishop g4, but after queen d3, threatening to move to h7 and attacking the queen at the same time, after bishop f5, just queen takes f5, queen takes f5, bishop takes f5, white emerges two pieces for the rook and in a much better position. So for this reason black didn't take on f5, instead black played knight to b4, attacking the bishop. And here I think white again missed a winning move. Knight h5 is so strong. He's got these two knights preparing to jump into f6 and if one of them is taken, the other one will capture and deliver a family fork. So black's pretty much forced to play knight ed5 here to stop f6, but then just queen g3 threatening mate, and after bishop g6 to block, white can just play e6 attacking the queen, and if f takes e6, just queen takes g6, and again knight f6 is threatened, and the queen f7 captures, captures knight d6, king g8, and white can just capture on e8. And if knight takes c2, just rook takes e6, and white emerges a piece up. So knight h5, again, another move that white skin missed. Instead he played bishop to b1 here. White still had, does have nice control over the position, but he's definitely missing some key ideas here. Knight ed5 is played, and again, knight h5 works here. If king h8, the knight can capture on g7, after king captures, just play f6, king h8, and now knight c5 attacking the queen. If the queen moves back, queen h5 is a really strong move. Black's pretty much forced to take on f6. And if the queen captures, it's got the bishop on b1 and the queen on h6 attacking this bishop and pinning it. Black can play knight bd5 to support the knight on f6, but then rook e3 is just really strong and threatens rook h3 and just piles of pressure on black's position. So black is doing very badly here. So definitely this idea of knight h5 is something that white skin missed again. But here he just plays queen g4. It's still a very strong move, threatening knight f6 ideas at some point. But now Freeman just takes on e5 with the rook. And now white skin finally plays knight to h5. Bishop d4 was considered a stronger move actually, attacking the rook and x-raying to this g7 pawn. If f6, now you can play knight to h5. Again, threatening knight to f6 check. If king h8, bishop captures, f takes, and knight c5. And again, white's in a very strong position. In the game though, white skin did play knight h5, which does work. So queen and the knight are attacking on g7, and knight f6 is also threatened. So if f6 here, just knight takes, knight takes, and knight takes and white's going to pick up the queen. So bishop g6 is forced to block and now white skin now plays knight takes g7. The king captures and he plays a very clever move bishop to d4 pinning this rook on e5. In this position black played rook a e8 but I think he actually missed a, a way to gain equality. Queen takes f5 just gains equality due to queen takes, bishop takes, bishop takes e5 and king f8. And both sides have got three pieces and a rook, but black is also a pawn up. So black's got very good chances here, so I'm surprised black didn't go for that move. Instead he supported the rook with rook a8, but the rook on e5 is still pinned. In this position weight skin put on, put on some more pressure with queen to g3 attacking the rook. And here black actually missed an incredibly clever move that would have actually got black into a great position. Knight to f4 here with the queen attacking the bishop on d4 works really well. If bishop captures on e5, rook takes e5, queen takes f4, then black can just play queen takes f5. After queen g3, black is actually in a better position. Both sides have got the same amount of material, but black is actually a pawn up. And it seems as though white's attacking chances have been diminished. If f takes g6 in this position, queen d4 check, king h1, and just knight takes g6. And again, black's actually just come out a pawn up. So, it looks as though both sides missed key chances. Knight to f4 here would have been a great move. 
Instead, black actually took now on f5 with the queen, and this is actually a really big blunder. I'm surprised black didn't see this, because white now just plays knight d6, where the queen's attacked, the rook on e8 is attacked, and the rook on e5 is still pinned, and the bishop on g6 is also pinned. And black's position does actually fall apart like a house of cards. If black moves the queen away to a move like d7, Knight takes e8 can be played with check, Queen takes e8 and just Rook takes e5 and White emerges the exchange up and in a much better position. So in this position Black plays King f8 and again White just has to be a bit careful but it's, it should be game over very soon now. So if White captures the Queen that would be a mistake due to Rook takes e1 check. So White skin's got to be a bit careful, he just plays Bishop takes e5 winning the rook back so he's got two pieces for the rook now and the queen on f5 is still attacked queen g5 is played but now weight skin just finds the tactics in the right moment he plays knight takes e8 so he's won both pair of rooks in two moves and after queen takes g3 bishop takes g3 bishop takes b1 weight skin now finds a great move just bishop d6 check the king will be forced to move to g8 and white can capture on b4 and capture on b1 at their leisure. So here black actually resigned just due to the fact that they can't capture this knight so it's moved, it has to be moved to g8 and here white can now just take on b4 and if recaptures just take on b1 and white will emerge a rook up and that's the reason black resigned. So in this game white was actually rated 2370 and black 2300 I just thought it was a very interesting game from both sides. Both sides did make some errors, but I think this Rook E5 move was quite impressive. You can see Josh Waitzkin had the right idea. He knew there was an attack brewing, and both sides had some key, key opportunities and some chances to win the game. So yeah, I thought this was a very interesting game. Please drop me a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you want to watch more chess videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.